Hello, everyone, and greeting to my friends in Poland at the Polish Librarians Association Conference, and particularly those involved with media and information literacy. I am very pleased to be presenting. My name is Mike Eisenberg. I'm going to bring up a webcam for just a minute. And there I am. How are you? Uh, I'm not going to do this whole thing via webcam video. I am going to use a voiceover PowerPoint using my slides. And hopefully that will work out well for everyone. And you will be able to see my material and better understand me. Uh, I may come back a little later and also just say goodbye with the live video cam. So moving back over to the presentation. This is a picture of me and my class. And um, to show that I do teach at the University of Washington, where I am recording this from. What I am going to do and to share with you are four things. I'm going to very quickly set the scene. Then I am going to talk about the big six, information and technology skills, and then some key themes of putting the big six into practice, and then finally, implementation of the big six. So to set the scene, technology is the answer, of course. Now what was the question? Be careful about gurus, whether they're technology gurus or information gurus telling you that technology is the answer to everything. Because the answer to everything is critical thinking or being able to solve problems. And really, that's what we're interested in about. The question is, how can our students be fulfilled and successful in whatever they choose to do today and tomorrow. At the University of Washington, every year we do a massive survey of freshmen and transfer students all the way through people who have graduated 10 years out. And what I want to emphasize is that the skills that they think are the most important are problem solving, information use, speaking, sorry, independent work, technology, group work, writing, and reading. And of course, these are the skills that are most closely associated with what we might call information literacy. Information literacy, as defined by the American Library Association way back in 1989, says that to be information literate, a person must be able to recognize when information is needed, and then to have the ability to locate, evaluate, and use effectively the needed information. What I particularly like about this is that it doesn't just emphasize location skills, but it focus on, focuses on recognizing when information is needed, and then evaluating and using information effectively, because those really are the key important skills involved with information literacy. Another way to say information literacy is to say big six or the big six. And that's what I'd like to talk to you about now, which is the big six skills and how we can use the big six to be effective in all that we do in information work. The big six. There are obviously six fundamental skill areas that I am going to go through in just a minute with you. Um, but I also want to show that the big six is also available in Polish. And we are adding this to our website. Hopefully, by the time you view this, this will be available on our website. And I will go through this in English. Uh, a number of times during this presentation. Now also, for the very, very young, we find that the big six may be a little too complicated or a little too sophisticated. So what we do is we switch to something called the super three. The super three has three stages to them. In the beginning, we plan. In the middle, we do. 
and in the end we review. So it's kind of like the student would be a main character in a story. And in the beginning of the story, they grew through and they plan it. In the middle of the story is when the action takes place and all the things that they do. And in the end, we talk about reviewing. Then as the students get older, we transition to the big six. And here are the big six stages. You'll notice that there are two sub-stages under each of the big six. We have here task definition, which means defining the problem, but also, excuse me, also defining the information that is needed. That was on my side, so sorry about that. And uh, the peop us as librarians, we need to really focus on and to think about this 1.2, identifying information needs. Now, we're not talking necessarily about sources yet. That comes in in the next stage, stage number two. In stage two, we want to be able to determine all possible sources and then to select the best sources. You know, we've moved in our world from a situation of abundance, excuse me, of scarcity of information, where we had to seek out information, to a situation of abundance today, where we really have so much information that the key is to select the best information, the best sources. Big six stage number three is location and access. We locate the sources both intellectually in terms of search terms and things, and then physically, whether that's online or whatever. And then equally important, 3.2 is to find the information within sources. We want to teach students how to find information, whether it's on a website or in a book or on a video. And then once we have that information, how do we engage it? meaning reading, hearing, viewing, touching, and then how do we recognize and extract what's relevant. This is one of the most important skills today, this 4.2, which is extracting what is relevant, and we might even say what is credible and focusing on credibility. Big six stage number five is synthesis. That's where we organize information and then we present the information. And today, we present information in many, many different formats. We present it in writing, in video, we present it in blogs and on the web and all kinds of ways. So presentation of information is an important skill. And then skill number six or stage number six is evaluation where we judge the effectiveness of our product and the efficiency of our process. And we help students to learn how to judge products, but also to judge process on how they might improve and do better, say, the next time that they engage in information problem solving. So that's the big six and the super three. What I'd like to do now is to talk about the big six in practice. And I'm doing that through five kind of themes of the big six. And you see them on this slide. And then I'm going to go through each one, where one of the most important things about big six and information literacy is providing a common vocabulary for helping our students to think about, to recognize, and to talk about process. Number two, the big six, super three, can be applied in all subject areas with all students of all ages and across all grade levels. So those of you who may be in high school situations or in higher education, in colleges and universities, this relates to you as well. The big six and this approach really relates to success in higher education as well as elementary and secondary school. We're going to talk about technology and how Big Six can give context to technologies and technology skills. Also, Big Six is not, it is not always a linear step-by-step -step process. It is flexible and we jump back and forth. And 
lastly, that the big six is best learned in context, whether it's a curriculum context or personal needs and personal situations. So let's go through each of these a little more detail. The Big Six provides a common vocabulary for helping children to think about and to recognize process. And the processes that we're talking about are these various stages. And that's why it's really important to emphasize the terminology. Whether you're going to use English or Polish, you want the students to be able to understand the various stages and to be able to identify where they are. And that's one of the most powerful things about the Big Six. Again, number two, the Big Six can be applied in all subjects and at all grade levels, K through 20, through higher education, and even into the business world. And of course, the Big Six is not just for kids. The Big Six is for any student. Number three, we're going to talk about technology. The Big Six gives context and meaning to technology and technology skills in terms of how we can put those skills to work. Technology is often all over the place. You know, we have technologies, but we get a new technology, something like, let's say, virtual worlds or a blog or something else, and these technologies are just scrambled. In some schools and in some library situations, we organize our technologies. So they're kind of listed out. But we're still kind of overwhelming, and it really still does not give us context for technology. So what we want to do is we want to put the technology in the context of what it can do for us. So here we see technology, a technology such as a blog, is really related to information seeking strategies. Or, we see blogs here as well, related to use of information. Presentation software like PowerPoint or video production is part of synthesis. We see here spell checker or a grammar checker. Those are technologies that relate to evaluation. So what we see is this nice ability through Big Six to put technology in context. And that's what we have. And as new technologies come on, we can find how they relate to one or more stages of the Big Six process. The Big Six is also not necessarily linear. It doesn't have to go in order. It can. But it can also be a looping kind of thing. So if a student finds themselves in information use, but they're trying to extract what's relevant, and they kind of lose their way, they can jump back to task definition. Also, if you think about it, some students like to work this way. They see task definition. And then they'll create an outline. They'll kind of list out in outline form what their project or paper is going to be. And then what they do is they think about the different information sources available, locate those sources, use the sources, and then go back to the outline and start to flesh it out more start to use it more. But then they need to go back and use other sources and other information, synthesizing again. And here, this is a crucial stage at this point, because this is evaluating the product in a formative way, not at the end, not summative where they're all done. But during the process, they might say, hmm, am I done? No, I need more information. So they go back to information seeking strategies. Then they locate and access the sources, use the sources, synthesize, etc. So this shows that the Big Six is very flexible. But what is really important, that students must be able to successfully complete 
every big six stage at one time or another. And lastly, the big six is best learned in context. And that can be curriculum, it can be a subject area, and in particular in school, I believe in assignments. That the big six wants and needs to link to real assignments. And one of the ways to do that is to, to identify the classroom curriculum take the big six and that's how we develop an integrated information literacy instructional program. And let me show you with the next slide three different contexts that we want you to think about when you're implementing a big six program. And process number one, excuse me, context number one is the process itself. And that is always placing the skills we learn within the Big Six context. Number two is the technology and context, as we showed. And lastly, connecting to the curriculum, in particular assignments. But it can also be homework, classwork, even exams, even tests can be used as a way of integrating the Big Six into instruction. Now, what I'd like to finish with is just to give you some examples of how the Big Six might be used in a curriculum context. Here are four examples, K through higher education. And the first one has to do with an assignment called signs of spring. This was an assignment that kindergarten students had and they did the super three using beginning and plan and we gave a lesson about what format are they going to present in and what sources are they going to use and that was all part of plan. The first or second grade assignment had to do with writing an animals report and we used a use of information lesson to teach them how to credit and to cite. The seventh grade lesson had to do with creating public health posters, posters that emphasized one or another form of public health. And that was synthesis and the lesson involved teaching students how to do ways of organizing. And then in grade 14, which is the second year of college, the students were doing a paper on recycling and it related to information seeking strategies and they came up with a criteria checklist. So let me show you a little more on each of these particular assignments. The Super 3 example had to do with a class of kindergarten students who had to make a picture of signs of spring. That was their assignment. And what we decided to do was to do a lesson on plan, a lesson on Super 3 Stage 1. And so what we did to the student is we emphasized and we talked to them about what does it mean to make a picture. And we had them brainstorm and come up with two choices. They could draw or color a picture or they could cut out and paste pictures on a poster or something like that. We had the students decide which one they were going to do and we broke them into two groups based on that because they had the beginning of their plan. And then later we talked to them about finding information. What were some good sources for finding information about signs of spring? Remember, that was their task. And we helped them to decide that books and people were two types of sources that they could use. And therefore, the students chose, are they going to use books first? Or were they going to use people? Again, what they had is their plan, and then they wound up with a plan related to both making the picture and finding information. So a student might have decided to cut and paste pictures and to use people to find the information. 
or they may have decided to draw and color and use books. And you see that there are four different groups that they could be in. Example number two is grades one and two. The students are working on animal reports, and we did a lesson on crediting and citing. Remember, crediting and citing has to do with use of information and synthesis from a big six perspective so that they take the information out that they need. What we did is a lesson on citing for very young kids where we told them that all they had to do was use a rubber stamp in order to stamp, did they use a book? Did they use people? Did they use a computer? Or did they use themselves? Now, in some schools, we have these citing stickers that we make available. Again, people, themselves, a computer, or a book. And so we taught the students how to do that, how to work on crediting and citing. And you see here that uh, we feel it's very important for students to be able to tell where they found their information. And by starting on citing sources at a very young age, it makes their work more credible. And also what it does is it gets them used to citing so that it is, it's not, uh, it's expected. It's not unusual for them. In the seventh grade, example number three, they had to do their health posters, their public health posters. And we emphasize synthesis, which is ways of organizing, ways of organizing. And what we did was we broke the class into groups. And every group was given a folder with about 15 pictures in it. The pictures were just of all kinds of different things, and they were all mixed up. And we found that the, we, if we told the student that their task was to organize the pictures in a way that makes sense, they were to do that in their groups. And each group worked on the pictures. And what we found was fascinating. The students would organize the pictures in a way that made sense to them. And then when we asked them at the end, how did they organize, they told us that some of them did it right here as a story. They made a narrative. Others organized it by categories. They had pictures that were, say, people, places, and things, or just people and things. Um, other students organized it um, as a uh, as a web where there was a, a central theme and then they organized around it. And you're familiar with how to create a web. Please forgive me, I'm trying to use a mouse to uh, create this here. But it showed that students were able to organize in different ways. And then they went on and they did their assignment. And you see here some examples of posters that were organized in different ways. This one here in the middle, this is organized by categories. This is organized by a story. It is some kind of chronology. And we see other examples of this. So those were four examples of how excuse me, three examples how to do that. The fourth example is a major paper in higher education. And the students were working on big six number two, information seeking strategies. And we were teaching them how to brainstorm and narrow. And what we did was, again, remind them they needed to determine all possible sources and then to select the best sources. And what we did was, we wanted them to tell us why they selected the best sources. And what we started to do is after the students determined all possible and then selected the best and then reported back to us on why we were able to create a classroom criteria checklist. So again, 
for the paper on recycling, they had to brainstorm all possible sources to select one or two good ones, then to state why that source or those two sources were the best because, and then to report back the why, and that allowed us to create a class checklist. And here is kind of an example of the checklist. It could be because it was on the topic or reliable or accurate or precise or complete, etc. Easy to use, available, current for. And what we want them then to do is as they turn in their paper, they do an annotated bibliography, an annotated list of references where they tell us why they chose that source. So did they choose that source because it was on the topic, or precise, or complete, or reliable, current, whatever. And they would just choose two or three of those. So that is the, um, again, those are four different examples of how to practically use the big six in instruction. The big six really facilitates what we're seeing in our society. There are paradigm shifts in our society and in education. There is a gap in the capacity that humans can process and all the overload stuff that's out there. And therefore, we have moved, as I have said, from a world of scarcity of information to a world of abundance. And that means our, our concerns needs to move from concerning just content to also being concerned about process. And that process is the information process, what we might call information problem solving, and a shorthand easy way to say that is the big six. The big six provides consistent and predictable information and technology skills learning K through 20 and it can be implemented immediately. So that is my presentation for your conference. I do hope that there is a chance for me someday to visit and maybe meet and talk with some of you. Let me put myself back on the screen, if I can. There I am. We're going to take a video snapshot, which will make it a little bigger. OK, we'll get rid of this and this. And so just let me say that thank you for listening to this webinar. Thank you for your interest in information and technology literacy. And particularly, thank you for your interest and hopefully future use of the Big Six and the Super Three. This is Mike Eisenberg signing off from Seattle, Washington, saying again, thank you very much for listening.